That intro just hits every time, you know, it's never let me down. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It is, I'm having to look at my watch. It's currently Wednesday the 9th. I thought Woo! today was Thursday. Realized it was Wednesday, but yeah. we're here. Um, today's a very special episode. We're going to gawk over the beauty of Maestro's past and relive the child within our hearts through these old pedals. And we're going to play the new pedals. We have demo boards here. And Nick, how you been doing? I'm, doing I'm, well? good. I'm doing good, yeah. You okay. look good. I like that hat. Thanks. Thanks. I love that you're repping some merch. Repping the merch. That's my, the name of the game. Madison, That's how are you here. doing? I'm enjoying some tea, so I'm doing. What kind of tea good. you got? It's a decaffeinated uh, something. I've, I'm not drinking caffeine right What's now. What's the okay, point of tea well. if it does not have caffeine? Well, I like. I don't know what language that was. <laughs> it's okay. I like the taste of things, but I don't mm. want the effects of things. So. Oh. Uh, so you're vegan. Okay. Uh, actually, somewhat, yes. So yeah, I knew that. I was joking. It's Your hair's too nice to wear a hat. How you doing, Joshua? Oh. Uh, it's too bad that decaf doesn't taste good. But That's oh, okay. sick burn. Sick burn. I'm good. Oh, you also have some merch. I have a hat, but I'm not wearing it. Okay. And we have a special guest via Zoom tethering over my phone, which could crash at any point in today's stream. Daniel, how are you? It's been a whole uh, about five minutes since I've seen you last. So. Yeah, the timing of having you on is it's ironic because we did our questionable. First, it's we questionable. Did our, uh, pilot episode of our hideously long version of us gawking over weird stuff we collect. You have quite a maestro corner there. This is my my uh, <laughs> my a cave. I feel a little bit like I'm like one of those like '70s like synth players who just like stuff is all around them. And or let's I'm just, in a bat cave. Yeah, let's just get it out of the way. You're a tech mogul. You have a mouse where you're actually can you show us your look, high look, depth switch? I can do it. I can do this fancy new thing. Boom. Whoa. Look at this. So then I can show things here. I figured it all out. Awesome. Well, the I point figured of it all out. Yeah, the point of today is we're going to let's look at the pedal board down. And yeah, we're gonna basically I have a bunch of old stuff here. There's more on the table. You have way more Maestro stuff. I have to admit it. And then we have the new pedals. So we'll jam on these, and we'll just kind of play old stuff, and we're going to talk about stuff and do stuff, and we have stuff to give away. Let's give some of them away right now. Hey, Joshua. how about this hat, since it's right here Whoa. in my hand? Uh, the first person to type Maestro in the chat gets a hat. Do, do they have to spell it right? No. No. Oh, nice. Okay. Maestro they have the right now. <laughs> Maestro in the chat. Daniel, is it Maestro or Miestro? I don't even know at this point. Maestro. All right. I've been saying maestro. Wait, no. I don't even know what I say now. I've you say, lost it. You've always said ma ma maestro. Maestro, ma but it's maestro. Yeah, I know. But, but it's like, I also pronounce like move wrong, so pie everyone gets mad at me. Nick, you have a story about saying, which we'll talk <laughs> about um, Moog later. What? Oh. Tell us yeah, your story. Yeah, I said, I said Moog like one time, and everyone jumped down my throat about it. And I'm gonna keep saying Moog, so I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. Moog, 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 Moog. Yeah, you can take Moog, out your Moog, anger Moog, on Moog, Daniel Moog. instead of me now. Yeah. All right. I think I think you know the thing with this episode is um, it's a little bit of a wandering episode, and it is what it is. And I think Daniel, I think that you allow me to feel better about being chaotic, and that's why you're on the show today. And uh, it's a gift. We're just gonna wander through this, so I think yeah. we should start with. Uh, Maestro, how it all started, maybe? Yeah. What we do? Yeah. Hello, and welcome to Pedal History High School. Today, it's Wednesday the 9th, and today's lesson is, what is Maestro, and where did it come from? Maestro is a company, and Maestro was owned by Gibson, and we have all seen this guy by now. If you have not seen this, I really can't help you. This has been on so many of our episodes we literally made a costume and dressed a grown man in this thing. So, right. The story of this, uh, there's a Nashville recording accident, right? That happens. And uh, a guy named Revis Hobbs designs the circuit. They take it to a place in Chicago called, it's, it's CMI, Chicago Music Instrument, which is also maestro. And these are like subsidiaries of Gibson, distribution, all this stuff. And they make the first guitar pedal ever. But before that, there were things they were doing like... Uh, tape echoes and such like this 
In fact, the first tape echo is impossible to find. Uh, supposedly, there's a prototype of that. I've heard of Josh, it. Josh, it's right here. What? What's that? No, it's you don't. I'm talking about the proto, right like the actual prototype of yeah, the tape echo. It's on the ground. No, that's not possible. It was it's lost. Right there. It was lost. It's, it's here. But they made the tape echo stuff before the pedals. Right, and it was already like in place, and they were making the EPs. But there's this prototype. Have you heard of that, the, Nick? The prototype? Yes, I have heard about the prototype. It'd be amazing Josh, if we could Josh, see it's it on or my floor. Well, show it if it's there. I just don't believe you. It's fine. Is it hooked up? It's not hooked up. There we go. Wait, uh, drum roll. Oh. In a road case. Still going. We're still going. Is that a custom made road case for the prototype of the first ever tape echo? Josh, if you uh if you came across the uh the first ever Echo Plex, uh you would build a road case for it too. You're not wrong. Alright, I'm gonna continue this drum roll. <clears throat> yeah, I love this. Ooh. There it is. I just let's give it a hand. Daniel, I think it's worth a segue here in our Pedal History High School for you to tell this insane, tell this, over. yeah, tell the story of this invention. And obviously, we'll get into some totally normal behavior material here for a moment. Go ahead. So, um, this is the prototype built by Don Dixon and Mike Battle in 1959. This is, it doesn't even have a serial code, a serial number. Um, it is completely like a bird's nest inside. Um, obviously it doesn't look like anything resembling what a, you know, a Echoplex would look like. It's got a handle in case you need a handle. Well, the handle's stuck, but it's got a handle. Um, yeah, so, uh, I had, a. it was found in a LA storage unit, um, of, which storage is the wars? craziest place. Storage Wars space style. It was found in a storage unit and, um, I switch back to my, my, my me face, um, and sort of a right place, right time sort of thing. It came into my possession. Uh, it was instantly sent to Brian Sowers in, in Portland, who did a, I, would, I wouldn't say it was a, he undid a lot of things that people had done to it over the years. And he brought it back close to be what it should be, which is to say something before an EP1. Um, he did an amazing job on it. We had a long discussion about whether or not um, we should make it good or make it what it was. And it's sort of a, it's closer to what it was versus good. It has some issues. It sounds kind of amazing and it doesn't sound like any other Echoplex. Um, but it's cool. deliciously handmade. Like my favorite thing about it. And I'll deliciously it. handmade. Just like my really favorite, del- just like pizza, del- the, my favorite kind. Handmade. It's like DiGiorno. Uh, yeah, sure. Is the label maker time marker so cool the uh, label maker to show the uh, the delay time uh, wow that's this amazing signed by don Dix- signed by don dixon here wow um so this is uh, as far as i'm concerned a a piece of american music history like a- everything starts with this yeah i've seen your um, collection it's freaking nuts this is like probably it, is it the coolest thing you have? I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I when when we had sort of worked it out so that it was suddenly mine, um, which was not something I was planning on doing. Like it literally, uh, it happened in a very strange way. That's too long of a story, but um, I wasn't expecting it to be mine, and then it suddenly was, and I was literally shaking for like forty eight hours because like. Imagine having spent like 20 years being a nerd about something and then you just sort of stumble into this. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, it didn't make it still doesn't make sense to me why, why, it's like, why it's this like is in my having position. your first child only more yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> I have a, I have serious, I think this has given me serious like doubts about my own like music the musical ability because i'm like should i own this do i deserve this <laughs> but i think i do i think um, you do yeah i mean one of the first things i did with it when i got is i brought it to this like pedal meetup in boston and just let random people play it 
because I was like, I was just so excited about it. I wanted to share it, um, and I'm going to continue to do that. It did go to it did go to Nam. Uh, yeah, you learned you it there. to Reverb. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cool. So, um, yeah, that's EP pretty amazing. Zero. Yeah, so you go from that. Obviously, that's pre this, which is an important, you know, in the timeline. It's important to know that Maestro, there were tape echoes, there were other things, and it's like this weird division uh, where Gibson had other products under that name for distribution. This is in a world before Amazon and Sweetwater and Guitar Center, and so the pedal comes along after the tape echoes, and you have an EP1, which is the tube echo. That's what that's a proto of. You have EP2, which goes solid state. Um, there's some amazing stories. We did an episode about, it's some, I don't know the title. It's the history of tape echoes. It's really good though. I'm biased to it, but you know, you leave that, you go into the EP3s, which I held up. Um, that's like classic rock 101. So it's a big deal to show this. It's, it's a big part of like the maestro story. Is that tube or solid state? Do you know off the top of your head? That'd be tube, yeah. Tube, okay, nice. You That's played fantastic. this, right, when we were up there? Fun fact. Yeah, that was yeah. the the very first tape I had I had ever played. And that, I had to play That's like... the Did you hear this, Daniel? What? When we came up and filmed with you, this is the first tape echo uh, Addison ever played. It's special. Pretty cool. That's a good first tape echo for sure. It's like slimy and beautiful. That might be zoom also. You gotta get the, we gotta make the zoom pedal oh. that you put in front of your pedal board that makes it sound like it's being streamed. But then zoom would sue us. Yeah. Okay, I plugged it in. Everyone was demanding that I plug it in. No, it's amazing. Yeah. It does work. It sounds like unbelievable. We're in no hurry uh, here. Did you hear what I said? Addison had never played a tape echo. We came up and filmed with you, and that was the first one he ever played. <laughs> it's all downhill from there, then. Truly, truly. No, I mean, it's it's cool. Like it does have some issues. Like it oscillates way too easily. That's an issue. It's not as much the oscillation. Um, but yeah, it was in sorry shape when I got it. We got it sounding great. Um, I'll, I'll, we can do a more longer thing. Yeah. No, that's later, cool. But... I mean, that's the kind of thing. Come up next time. I'll probably, we'll just do something with that. Um, yeah. So moving through that story, 62, the f world's first guitar pedal is released. And that's by Maestro. And there, you know, that's the uh, Chicago musical instrument group there. And then after the pedal, so the pedal's kind of a failure. And I'm retelling the story for the hundredth time, but. You get three years in and you get to 1965 and the Rolling Stones record Satisfaction and there's the dun 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 dun, dun that riff and that was a placeholder for horns and Keith Richards uses it and that pedal explodes three years after the release and after being a massive failure and at that point Maestro gets so big. They're selling so many of these fuzzes. There's so much more exposure to the tape echoes, et cetera, et cetera, that they actually... Um, they take on Lowry Organ Company, which is really cool. Then they're bought by Norlin. And then Norlin is a name that is seen throughout the history of Maestro. Um, so this is in the, around 69 they're bought by Norlin. So think of Hendrix at Woodstock. That, that era, that kind of evolves. They're bought. It becomes even bigger. Um, and then they pull in one of the few true geniuses of circuit effects design that have ever existed there's a handful of like in my opinion geniuses and oberheim is one of them he was a synth designer he invented um he invented phaser for guitar and if you look down here on the on the, the pedal down this is the first ever phaser for guitar look how beautiful Com just daniel those, comment on the beauty great. it's it's unbelievable i mean they all look like space station consoles for like uh like the pilot episode of Star Trek. Yeah, it's or insane. Like, it's all like uh, what's the silent running? What's that movie with the space that's like all disco themed? What? I have no idea, but I want to watch it now. That's good. Then the you go from Carousel. Carousel. I don't know. Then you go yeah. from this, and then we have the introduction of this size. This is my favorite Maestro pedal, I believe. 
Um, this era here kind of drops. It, it's early 70s, like 72. And Oberheim, now these are suspiciously identical. If you if you put, you know, there's there's a maestro filter, obviously, and it's the same thing. And he just, he made them all, OEM or private label. And so you can buy two versions of almost all of these. And this phaser is classic. Um, so there's a Maestro one, not Phaser. I don't have that, but I have the Oberheim. Um, I have a I have a box for one here. There's like a is there like a stinger for that? Is there a stinger? I can't find my stinger. Do you have the Oberheim box <laughs> or the? <sighs> Sorry, my my stingers are out of order. It's fine. Voltage control. For, this is Oberheim. Yeah. Ooh. So this Ooh. is he Ooh. you didn't know I had this. Ooh. This is hecka rare. This is Oberheim Electronics. Santa Monica, just because I missed it. There we go. I, it's all about timing. Stingers. Ah, uh, Logan's Run. That's what it was. Yeah. Look, people are correcting me. Is this an Oberheim warranty card? Ooh. Wow. Is this where a rat has eaten the inside of the box? Wow. Oh, gross. the rat <laughs> ain't the box. So this this is pretty cool. So there's there's a cool crossover there. You know, seventy two. These are these, I think my uh, phaser date seventy four or something and. Uh, they uh, they sold sixty thousand of them in the first four years. It's insane. So we talk about these things like they're rare. There was sixty thousand of them. Yeah, but they're, where are they? That's what's insane. It's crazy. This is probably my favorite envelope filter. This is dated seventy five internally. This is the one thousand six hundred thirty seventh of this unit. Um, this is my favorite envelope filter. This is the Oberheim version. Yeah, Wait, I thought I always thought that was just the sample and hold, like just rebranded or like. It's like this it's really cool. Filter? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't believe so. I always thought. I just thought that was like that was just there. It might be. The and then obviously Octave Box. So yeah, you have that whole story, and then you get to seventy six, and in this pattern of genius, they involve more geniuses, and this is where Moog designs a line of pedals that are freaking unpractical and weird. They're like this thing, and you. I can't even demonstrate. Like you have to put it on the floor, and the whole it's thing got spinny wheels. Yeah, and it's like foot spinny wheel. It's kind of amazing. This this is actually another another um, pedal like we talked about last time. It's a pedal that looks like a futuristic tank. Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks like a tank. Pew, pew, pew. And look at pew, this pew, one. Pew, pew, pew. Look how crazy this is. Imagine seeing this in a store. This is pre Boss pedals. So imagine walking into a store and like. Pick a city. Pick a boring city, Nick. Boring. Uh, boring. Uh, uh, boring. Salt Lincoln, Lake Nebraska. City. <laughs> Lincoln, Nebraska? Sure. I felt it. Lincoln, Nebraska. And you see this, and the only other thing you've ever seen is like like a big muff. Or like an MXR Distortion Plus. And then there's this thing with a freaking clicky toy wheel. They're just... you know, it's, it's worth noting that the foot this foot switch is the entire surface of the pedal. Yeah. Yeah, it's disconnected from the bottom. The whole it, thing is the switch. Listen to this. This listen. is, but I mean, this is all like how this was meant to be controlled with your foot. These are meant to be turned with your foot. These glow, by the way. Check this out, front cam. Listen, ready? Can you give me a drum beat to that? Can you click yours too? Yeah, yeah. There we go. How about a bass line? This is the weirdest jam we've ever done. Foot switch, click foot switch, click 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 foot switch. It's the maestro foot Turn switch. That now. Listen to Turn it now. With it's foot. clicking all Turn through that. Now everywhere with your foot. somehow. The maestro foot switch, made by Moog, formerly known as Moog. That's a that puts a whole new meaning to playing a pedal. <laughs> That's quite. Yeah. That's it for Pedal History High School. So, where do we go from here? Let's make an executive decision. Yeah, I have, a winner. Yeah. Can I have I answer, a winner. Can I answer a question I saw in the chat real yes. quick? Um, I I forget who asked it, but um, yes. If you can, you switch to me. Am I? I can't tell. You're you're good. We got okay, you. Okay. Um, the uh, the record head is in fact on. Um, the the moving thing oh wait oh, i didn't cool. notice that that's yeah. crazy yeah normally the head would not be there yeah no 
wild. that is that is true. Good catch. I'm glad you remembered that because I had written it down, but I was so intent on making sure we got this winner out that I totally oh, forgot. So Andy, focused. Andy, thanks you. Um, anyway, Elliot Bryce, you and the Meister hat. Please email me at not vlog. Oh yeah, it is our new JHS show email, the JHS show at jhpedals.com. J-H-S pedals. What did I say? J-H pedals. <laughs> Do that is a, There's another good question in the chat right now is how do you pronounce Moogerfoger? Is it Moogerfoger or is it Moogerfoger? <laughs> I love that you're able to... If I tried to man the chat, I would lose my mind. I love that you're... You remember that I liked every comment on our pilot episode. Yeah. You, yeah. Dan, uh, yeah this I is how I roll. looking through the comments and Daniel answered a lot of people i'm proud of like we need that you know because we don't care anymore elliot they're spending, email me they're your spending their time address. with us all right let's look down at the pedal board cam and let's the way we're going to do this we're going to talk about old stuff and then we're just going to demonstrate these new pedals so there is some mystery to what is going on here i mean i just to be transparent i you know i show stuff all the time i love displaying it's exciting to display these I ask, you know, what are they? Like, can you help me help people? And they won't tell me. They won't tell me what they're based on. They're based on something, and that's fine. So we're going to play the fuzz tone, which is a discrete uh, fuzz. But it's unclear if it's like, is it like the old fuzz tone? Or is it this version, which is radically different? Or is it something new and fresh? And they're, they don't want to say, and that's fine. So we're going to demo. Assumed, I assumed it was based on the 1B. I think so too. We're That's and, and here's the thing. Was. Because we don't know, I can't do what I can't do. Like I would I wanna lay that, that out and freaking like, deep. I know like I wanna lay out a, a tree for a, a tone of a tree of tone. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly trying to build the tone tree. And it's like, hey, if you like this, these things are derivatives. Is that the word? Yes. Sure. Yep. I don't know. So yeah, that's I'm not good. I'm not sure what's going on here. But it's a fuzz, and we're just going to start here and do a jam. And while we do the jam, Daniel, you'll just, like, be there in the comments heckling people, I guess. I don't. Yeah, know. I'm going to read comments because I right. can't jam with you because of the lag. So let's listen to it first. For, let, here's what I – this is – I love this. I love the light-up trumpets. Is that what yeah. those are? Yeah, it's the logo that's on your it's head. It's trumpets? It's like your, – look at your head. Look at Nick's head, everybody. So it's, it's, like it's worth noting – yeah, go ahead, Daniel. It's worth noting on the light-up trumpets that the power switch on the older units, yes. i.e. like the rhythm and sound, I love that and you said the I woodwind, and the USS-1, all the switches lit up, and the phaser too, actually. So in a, they lit up in this kind of amber color. So the glowing trumpets uh, is a great little nod to that because um, you don't need a power switch on these pedals, but having like sort of a, you know, it's just a neat little thing. Yeah. I was happy they did it. Here's the here's the box to this. Here's the box. Um, packaging's really cool. I feel like Ryan Burke of Sixty Cycle at this point opening these boxes are a. Uh, it's almost like a giant engagement ring box, but it's like from Coles. <laughs> is is that the texture? It's of like the box? bulk engagement. It's like, hey, you want to get engaged oh. like six times? Buy this bulk engagement pack at Coles. <laughs> Buy Maestro. Um, there's yeah. That sticker's nice. They got some cool swag in there. There's some good swag. Uh, we're going to give away more swag. I want to see in here. I want to see. I just really want to know what this topology is. Uh, the, the the user, the contemptuous, I called it. He didn't even mention their awful pedals from the late 2000s. Was that the like the ones that were sold in like Walmart? I, th Target? I that think that's about? the contempt. There are these like strange things that appeared. It's like yeah. very obviously just they're in labeled. blister packs. It's the basement of Nam. Hey, we'll make you a pedal. And then they're like, yeah, let's do that. And then the <clears> pedals <throat> arrive and there's like a bill in there with some cocaine. It's like, yeah, that kind oh, of, oh, yeah. That's Here's the where fuss. Cocaine comes from. There's a uh, classic mode. Again, does that mean FZ1 mm. or B or two? I don't know. Then there's modern. Modern. So classic is. Less mids, more bass, more mids. I don't. Let's see how it attack. The attack is obviously fuzz control. Let's 
darken it. Let's see how the... I found you had to take the tone knob way down with, with, classic, with, with classic mode. What I'm doing now for the studio audience is... This is called Josh trying to figure it out with his ears, having played like seven million fuzz pedals. I almost... I don't know. It doesn't feel familiar. There was almost like an octave action yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, when in you're there. in the mo that's what I was trying to enhance. There's an octave. I don't know if it's on purpose. Okay. Cuz if, cool. if you know enough fuzz and you would obviously hear an octave higher up. I Which think it's just fair. like super odd harmonics. Which is cool. That's neat. So that's full fuzz bridge pickup. I feel like Andy from Reverb. Here's my clean zone. Attack down. This is interesting because it is usable cleanish. Why would you ever do that? But it's interesting, another reason. It doesn't feel familiar. I did a uh, I did a shootout with like an FC1 this morning yeah. and they they're very different. Yeah. Like I they, and it's hard to say cuz it's hard to talk about because they don't specifically say this is a this is a take on an FC1 or an FC1, you know, A or a 1B. They don't really know. It does just sounds very different to me. Um the yeah. the modern <laughs> mode feels more like just a, a straight distortion, frankly. That's um, what it feels like to me. It feels like a lot of mids. Yeah. And to be frank, like this is not a very usable pedal. Like there's a reason that in 65, it was walked into Macari's and the guy's like, I think it's broken. It has no sustain and it sounds tinny and they make the tone bender. So with that said, let's jam in the modern attack up. I'll mute my mic and uh, I'll just try to play like a sick riff. I don't know. Sick I'll sit riff. here quietly. Yeah, and just troll people in the comments. That's fine. Hey Daniel, troll me. while we're yes. uh, while we're jamming, I want you to pick the winner of these patch cables. So I can pick anyone I you want. You pick anybody you want from the chat for patch cables and this Maestro XL shirt. Okay, uh, the first person who gives me. Um, The name of Michael B. Jordan's character in the fourth season of Friday Night Lights. that I've yet to talk about. dead battery is a slide because I can't find my slide.
Man, that was just full of obstacles. What's, uh, I have always stood by the fact that the Vinny Super Extra Heavy Duty 6F22 is a great slide. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, with have you. I not said this for years? Like, I've heard it since I've been here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Joshua, we have a winner. Okay, go. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, this is not rigged or anything. His username was Danger Ryan. Yo. <laughs> But Michael, uh, Michael B. Jordan's character's name was Vince Howard. Yeah, that's a good show. So, and you know, he's show. the best coach on TV. He's it's 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 great, hands down. Coach is so good that if you're a Marco Poloer and you Marco Polo with Daniel, his avatar picture, whatever you want to call it, is a is, picture of Coach. Yeah. yeah. You guys are always doing like Hercules um, trivia, but I'm just gonna do Friday Night Lights trivia. Come on, man. Friday Night Lights. I was trying to figure out. I thought that was a picture of you from like 1990. I it <laughs> Daniel has never worn. He's never worn the Oakleys with I, like the, the neck. It was no, out uh, of character, true, but you know, people change. Uh, no, Josh. True story. Um, because I'm, I'm like really little uh, Josh or like tiny Josh. Hold or giant Josh? No, you, uh, eight foot Josh. <laughs> um, because I'm very sensitive to light and diffused light, uh, my my wife bought me a pair of really uncool, like Oakley Coach Taylor style sunglasses <laughs> to drive with. That's um, awesome. Because otherwise, I want to drive the car off the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think here's what I want to do. I think there's a, some speculative similarity. That's a sentence in the distortion invader and the fuzz tone, and I think you feel this too. I and, do. They and, feel you feel like you can do the same thing with both of them. And I, because the email's vague, like we not we're not gonna like expose these circuits, whatever, whatever that means. I wonder if there is. So I just want to demo it and get it out of the way, like because I want to play it. It's a transistor discrete distortion, and the fuzz is a transistor discrete fuzz, and they both have three knobs and a toggle. Well, they all have that. But so my theory fell apart. But anyway, a good a good theory can stand even without evidence. I've learned that in the last two years. Oh. I don't want to get political cool. or talk about Olive Garden, but I do I do appreciate a distortion with the built-in gate. Garden though. To throw people off. Just throwing that out yeah. there. <laughs> or did you? What'd you say? What did Me? You? Yeah. I said I do appreciate a distortion with a built-in gate. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's nice. Yeah. So uh, I don't I don't I don't love this pedal. But I do okay. appreciate the gate. Talk, talk about what you don't love about it, because I'm about to demo it, and then I want to see if I love what you hate, because hating what you love is um, love what you hate, girl. Okay. I think I think what I don't, what it doesn't do it for me is, is it's sort of inherent with all of these, is that there was no distortion, maestro distortion pedal. And okay. it feels a little foreign to me, and maybe I just need to spend more time with it. Like I spent, a, I spent a couple hours of these the other night, um, and so much of these units, like this thing especially, the USS One especially, there's something truly bizarre and inspiring about them because they sound insane. I mean, like the sample and hold pedal. I think maybe because these were kind of made for. They weren't necessarily made for guitar players. They're right. made for like for for synths and keyboard players. Like created the phaser, by synth geniuses. Yeah, the phaser pedal is not meant to go on the floor. You know, it was meant to go on a table. And I think we're basically unintentionally playing guitar through these things as they were like synth pedals. They were keyboard pedals yeah. and such. And that, especially like this guy led to really, really unique sounds that you're not going to get elsewhere. And I think one of the things that kind of bugged me about this is it's just a, it's just a distortion pedal. Gotcha. And I've heard many like it. And I just kind of, I struggle with that a little bit, especially being someone so excited for this line. I was just kind of like, it's just the distortion pedal. So if we were playing D&D, &D, we could call you the purist and like your powers would be purism. You would like, yeah. You would point a gun at people, and they would become like really into the purest mentality. You know, I, like I mean, it's also like this is a wild game of D and D you're playing. <laughs> this is a wild game of D and D. So the distortion, maybe, maybe this is where my disappointment came from, is the uh, the distortion here. The invader distortion has red triangles on it. Yes. When I see Maestro red triangles, I think of this. 
Yes. Oh. One of the greatest well, fuzz pedals go... ever made. Yeah. This, I'm going to my other camera. Wow. This is one of the greatest pedals ever gotcha. made. And it's You're... got a big red triangle on it. Okay. Boom. I see you. I That's thought. one and... that I wanted so badly in this drop. And because it's, it's unobtainable to most of you. I don't even have which, one. What's that one called? Like, I need to admit, I don't have this one. Is, I, like, you this have, is like, the bass Brassmaster. And once again, this Sick. this plays on... I'm going to go back to my it's normal camera. bass specific um, buzz that is like on so many records with guitar. If you, if you go back to the the literature around the, the FC1, it all talks about how that pedal was made to simulate brass instruments yeah wow. that's yeah. the craziest thing the it's demo, like it's yeah. the first fuzz pedal it leads to distortion and all these things down the line the sound of rock music etc cetera, etc cetera. rolling stones blah 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 and the story even with the rolling stones the satisfaction sound is that uh keith richards wanted a horn section yeah yeah right and he found that this pedal someone was like oh this pedal makes makes things sound like horns so he demoed what was going to eventually be replaced with actual horns you know, uh, with this pedal. And then it kind of like, well, we actually like this, but this, that was made to simulate the sound of brass instruments with like bass and whatnot. And the brass master is called the bass brass master because once again, it's supposed to make your bass sound like a brass, like a horn section. Yeah. Right. And, but you plug a guitar into this thing and it's great. It's, it's like, yeah, it's incredible. Again, I I actually don't have one of these. That's sad, Josh. Uh, everything's fine. Hey, Josh. I need you to cut back to me for a second. Uh, just, just, just. Um. You have two. Oh. <laughs> ah. Now it's time to watch Josh have a meltdown. <laughs> I bought that off a, I bought that off a nice man on Craigslist like 10 years ago a very old man um, so yeah I think uh, I think some of my disappointment was inevitable because when I see a red triangle on a Maestro yeah. branded unit I think it's going to be a Brassmaster I think it's going to yeah. be a, a reissue of one of the greatest like fuzz circuits yeah it's, you know there... it's, it's such a unique circuit too like yeah in all fairness like, it's, we... We need to say, you know, Maestro Gibson has said we are dropping some historical units. We have no idea what those are either. And I pray to the God of effects, pedals, and sounds that they just do those. Because, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I want to see new guitar players buy that pedal new. Yeah, that'd be and cool. And, like, enter it in yeah. at just as it is, like, the triangle, the vibe, everything. So I need to play this pedal. Let's top down here. Um, so yeah, it it's it's all. I'll say this: my instinct on it, it feels. I don't think it is, but it has the Jordan Boston vibe, which is more of a fuzz than a distortion. And the gate is obviously. Obviously, from a design standpoint, we can know that's starving the bias on one of those transistors. I don't know if it's three transistors, two, or four. If I knew that, I could tell you what it is, but they're keeping that. But the gate is on. It's... I'll say this. I, I really... Like, this is a cool fuzz. I would rather just have this for me. Like this would find its way on my board as a fuzz and distortion because it's, yeah, it's Are you talking about the, the fuzz tone one or the, just the, the invader distortion. Cause it feels yeah. like it does both. Sit, sitting back from it. Um, I think it's kind of, there was an initial disappointment thing. It's not a bad distortion. It's just like, it's not as weird as I'd want it to be. Um, yeah. But I also like, if you're someone who plays like high gain, you know, riff riffosaurus music, which I'm just not necessarily that person, like, yeah, there's some weight. It's got some got some heft to it. There yeah. is a lot of low end, like, yeah, a lot. All right, let's do a jam in A. I don't know what I'm playing. Just hang on. We were in A. Let's get out of A. Anywhere. Let's do you go for it. E, because I never it. play an E. Have yeah. I? I've never played an E. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs>
Yeah. I. It feels very Jordan Boss tone in its vintageness. You know, at first I thought this is going to be some kind of hard clipping distortion. It's definitely not. It's definitely not radish. It's definitely not anything like that. I mean, what's cool so far is that about both of these pedals, you're like, these are not like anything that I can I can recognize. So that's I, pretty sweet. Yeah, I think in a world where pedals are harder and harder to right. do something like Unique. Yeah, there is there is a feeling um you know, I think in and we do it all the time every episode. There's always this moment and there's always stuff pouring in the door. Like you get really good at playing a pedal and kind of knowing the family. Sure. Yeah, I'm not sure on these two. Which is cool. There's yeah. a lot of chat about the bass tone being particularly great today. Mm. Oh man. What's your path? My pat I'm so glad you asked because I can give another shout out to the fine folks at Poison Noises. Oh, you're using the, the crook, the y'all. Crook. Go buy one. They're ninety nine dollars. I didn't know this. My friend bought one. I said you Wait, need to go buy They did the drinking though. game, right? They did yeah. the drinking game. Yeah, go check out game. their YouTube. Channel you can too. barely buy a latte for that. That's true, honestly. Yeah. I mean, the lattes I've started drinking since I've gotten to know you. Yeah. I can't afford one yeah, for ninety nine dollars. Don't even get me going on pour overs. Right, right, right. Well, yeah. I wouldn't dare. But no. anyways, so that's I'm I'm using the crook into a color box, which is always on, and then in the computer. I'm hitting a, a B15, like a UAD B15. You're using a plug-in? I'm using a plug-in, man. No oh, amp. You're Heck using yeah, digital man. technology. Oh, and it sounds world. amazing. Yep. Daniel, what? how about this USS-1? I want to jump back to something one. someone you, said. You jump back, they and said, then you take us back to old school town. Jonathan Torres says, I wish they'd release an album with the type of music they jam to. More than anything I want to do with you guys is I want to do the... At some point in the 70s, Electroharmonics released the Electroharmonics Work Band, and they made an LP that's like an yeah, LP of amazing jams that just demoed their product. And more than anything, I want to make one of those with you guys at some point. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the USS One. Um, I gotta just I gotta tell us about it. it. It's your turn. Can I get my? Little, we basically uh, just snuck an episode two of totally normal behavior <laughs> in on a Wednesday. That's hey, what we're while doing. While you're yeah. getting that together, I want to give yeah. this shirt to Larry C. Yeah. Uh, Larry C. In the chat said doom metal, and I love doom metal. So <laughs> let's talk. That's ab- never gonna work again. Let's give. Uh, lo- uh, I love this logo. It's the original lo- logo, and it's got the vibrator like like the vibration font on it. It's so nice. I guess. So Larry guess C. Please, please email me. The JHS show at jhspedals.com. <laughs> All right. So the the uh, the USS one. Point to what you're playing. Uh, so these are these are USS ones, and these are Oberheim designed. Uh, I don't know control panels. I don't know <laughs> what you call these things. They are they it are honestly massive, looks psychotic. The amount of stuff yeah. you have behind you. I just like I you know you know we talked about the other day how if you put sliders on something it makes it ninety percent better. If you put primary color banana rocker switches on something, yeah. oh man. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a hundred of them. If you're playing the drinking game from the crook guys, then you just said sliders. Sliders. <laughs> It's not um, a fader. So yeah, these things they're a little too big to move around too much. Yeah. Um What's they the, are why like, did they make these first of all? What what is this? Why is it so big? I don't know other than that like I mean, you know my feeling on big pedals. I want all pedals to be absurdly huge. Um so the fact that these are the I mean the board on these things only takes up this top part. Yeah. You know, it, they're not that big. It's the big chungus um, of of effects. Yes, but these things are uh they're just they're just they're full of bizarre sounds like there's not like there's no great you're not gonna get like a sweet like soothing guitar tone out of this it's like instantly it's like (laughs) it's like just just chaos right off the bat um these uh these little sliders up here and up there, um, they're notoriously hard to move. You feel like you're going to break it every time you touch one of them. Uh, but the uh, the subharmonic on these things is one of my favorite ever sounds. Uh, 
that's the only way that's the, like, that's the only thing i can play on these things like, that kind of <laughs> sound um so there's a subharmonic an envelope and unfortunately the envelope settings the envelope section doesn't work on either of my units um the phase only works on this one and it's very um <laughs> very uh you know yeah. good and rich i feel like that phase could take you from like waylon jennings all the way to incubus yeah i am um... the back of the county just, with just spoke in it um and then there's uh the sample filter hold section, which is not the same as the pedal, kind of. Let's just put everything on. You know what? If you work at Zoom and you're watching the show, <clears throat> Zoom's not real helpful for demonstrating pedals, but no. it is fun. Yeah, I can only go so much near, but um, yeah, they're just big, goofy, goofy, um, big, goofy, goofy units. Mine definitely needs some work on them. They're a little low output, but um, it's one of those things like I, I you talked about how like pedals aren't always about the sound. Yeah. Like for me, like there's the tangible experience of, of playing with these things. And the fact that when every time I sit down with them, I feel like I'm um, using like an old, like, like, I don't know, 1940 space shuttle or like, you know, this, this guy being looking like the control panel for an old jukebox or something like that. Mm -hmm. totally, there's just yeah. something that's so like mentally rewarding about sitting here and just playing with crazy little rocker switches. And like, it's so colorful and, I, these aren't dissimilar to the toys that my toddler plays with. So what yeah, does that say about me? You just reminded me, it's in the, Nick might know, we have like a weird drum machine, a maestro drum machine. Oh, yeah. Where is that? Is I, that at my house? Uh, maybe. I don't Somewhere. know where that is. I don't know. Someone There's... recreate this as a normal size pedal, please. You could definitely yeah. take one of these. You could definitely fit a USS one into a, a normal, very functional size enclosure. Um, Gibson, please, for the love of God, do that and make sure it has little rocker switches on it because I love these things, but I don't like lugging them around. Yeah, and yes. they're and things break when they're this old. Like these these bells yeah. again are like we're getting up there yeah. fifty years old. And don't worry, I didn't put WD forty. I did use deoxit in this this morning to get it to kind of. Yeah, work just again. a pro tip: if you have an old pedal, please, for the love of God and all the past saints of every faith, don't spray WD forty <laughs> into a pedal. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like I just, it. I'm gonna move on. All right, let's move on to the. Uh, let's do the, let's do the comet chorus here. Let's check it out. I like this one. Yeah, this one. Uh, again, the light is satisfying. That is it a is. satisfying light. Um, if you haven't watched things like for size reference here, this this enclosure for this switchback, which I have on the floor to turn a loop on and off this is basically an mxr case like a dynacomp so this is some perspective they're they're a nice little size they're unique um they're not square they're a rectangle they're small but they're not like a normal case like we use or whatever that's worth noting um any any pedal that has a wedge enclosure gets like two yeah. extra points from me yeah this has a, a real faint wedge which is nice i'm not going to pull it off but let's ch let's check this out so i'm i'm in the um yeah so there's basically earth and orbit oh this is, orbit is good yeah earth orbit is where it's at earth is going to be a chorus this these are bucket brigade meaning uh old old tech vintage 70s tech i'm in the wrong loop Wait, there we go. Um, so, yeah, these have analog parts in them, like the time device is analog. 
There we go. I think what I like about the orbit is that you turn the orbit on and you go, oh, this isn't a chorus. It's something else. Yeah, this feels... The mix is really interesting. Again, not familiar. And, you know, I think... Uh, I think a plus here, and I'm going to back Addison's wild claim up. I think these are, like, probably approached from originality more than anything else because they don't feel like anything. Even this chorus mix control, this is a very interesting element. Like I always pay attention to mixes, how if they phase at all. There's a volume, there's a volume attenuation in that. Here's your fast speed. I'm a vibrato it... person. I think you are too, Daniel. So here's the vibrato. Yeah. It has almost a magnetone vibe. There's a lot of very useful sounds in this one. That is so interesting. It's like a trim. Very interesting. You know what I just noticed too about the speed knob is that even at its crazy settings, I love when pedals have like at extreme settings usable sounds. It yeah, just has I, that. I will say this. Maybe. This modulation, there's nothing I've played like it. I yeah, can't, it I, stuck out to me, too. I think because I opened it up and I was like, oh, it's just going to be a chorus pedal. Like, eh. And then I like went to the orbit mode and was like, ooh. And it felt very, like, much more old, uh, old, you know, old spring tank amp. I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's hard for me because most everything including stuff i make is you know we use a c2 or we use a small clone or something and jazz it up this feels really not that it's very unique yeah i like of of the five of these this is the one that stood out to me the most as like i like this i'll uh, you know i'll i'll turn the I'm invader not gonna, i can't lug this board around everywhere but i do like the pedal i'll turn the invader into like a lighter thing and yeah let's jam let me just, uh, we'll do like a cordy, 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 strummy thing and then find a groove. I don't know. Cool. A minor, something, something, strummy thing. Sounds like the cranberries.
that honestly has this very much interesting more than chorus trimo thing going yeah yeah i like why why do they even brand it with calling it a chorus like it's kind of a uh, yeah, it's just weird. It's like you're, you're, you're kind of marketing as this, this is a chorus pedal. And it's like, yeah, it's technically, but the better setting in it is not really a chorus. Yeah, it's something like else. the chorus mode. I remember making a note playing this. It's not, it's almost not even chorus. That's like vibrato more than anything. Yeah. Okay, well. It's a cool one, though. Um, yeah. I did like this one. This is the ultimate uh, chorus. Very, you got very, uh, very cranberry there. <laughs> cranberry. Yeah, I... Um, I felt it. I felt a lot of. Someone emotion. said cranberries with shoegazers. Shoegazish. Weren't they were almost shoegazy at moments. Yeah, they're great. Um. All right. Let's uh, rhythm and sound it up. I guess. Show rhythm us. Rhythm and sound. Rhythm and sound is another rare bird that, of course, you have three of or something. I have four of them. It's fine. It's totally fine. No, I have. Uh, I have two rhythm sounds and two of the woodwind units. Um, I bought them a long time ago. Uh. This one came from the now infamous and long lost uh, House of Guitars pedal closet, which was a very oh, real thing in the early 2000s. In New York? Where there was a, in uh, Rochester, New York. Rochester. Um, Rochester. Um, there was a closet that was uh, literally, uh, had a literal pile of pedals in it. Like they would buy pedals like in trade ins and just throw them in a closet and they would lock it. So you had to go there and get someone to let you in and then you could just dig through the stuff. And um, it's, to this day, my happy place, um, mentally. And uh, me I bought this guy Matthew for, um, he goes, I asked how much it was. He goes, how much you want? I mean, how much do you want to pay? And I was like, I don't know, 120 bucks. And he goes, I bought 90. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, that's how they do it up in Rochester. How about, how about 90? Um, and, I love uh, that. what a story. I guess we can see it in this one. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. It, it's so beautiful the, the i it's, need yeah i before you even demo this you're you're a brilliant like person to talk about aesthetic branding iconography logos types that like you just love it and you sit around <sighs> in your own time as long as i've known you you just make fake pedal brands for other people yeah. like it's, yeah, I yeah. you've you once uh, pitched me on redacted a thing that you're doing, and I did an entire like design mockup for you just out of for, and you were, and I think you like you had it in like twelve minutes, and I was confused yeah, and I, I had it very quickly. Um, but yeah, talk so, about how freaking amazing that thing looked. I mean, this whole the old line is just perfect. You're frozen, and it's great. It's frozen in oh, time. No. Frozen in time. time. Hold on, you're frozen. Nick, how about you? I mean, you're up there too. Like, yeah, when I, frozen I, when I when I think of visual people, what are yeah. your thoughts on this whole thing? Well, I mean I there. Yeah, they're they are they're they're gorgeous. I like, love do the top like, down rocker. and look at this. It they're just so there's like a minimal element to them. Like it's I just I love that there's just like a block of color, like it's so great. Yeah, uh, it's just I don't Am know. Am I back yet? It's kind of how I feel about like album artwork. You know what I mean? We had a conversation today. Like some of the best album artwork is just like, like a nice portrait. Like you know what I yeah. mean? And that's I feel like they kind of have this minimalism, but the things that catch your eye are so wonderful. Like the colorful toggle knobs. I mean. Or uh, switches. They're just <laughs> toggle knobs. I think what minimal there is I'm, no I'm a, Daniel only Maestro. I'm a I'm a, I'm I love minimalism. Obviously, my pedals are like a color with like an icon of a you know freaking chicken's foot or something on it. So I think with minimalism, yep. there's not a lot to look at. But when you really, if it's done well, it can be like really captivating because it is so singular. And there's something about the maestro stuff that has that yeah here. am you i back you're can back. you guys hear you're me? back take it over okay. talk about it um it's it's sort i'll of give a, you a stinger like a, to start you, this here's your stinger to start your rant okay and now it's time for the meticulously obsessing over small details no one should care about great <laughs> <laughs> um 
there is a there's sort of a like a U, ux experience here like interface stuff um in that it's just so friendly to sit down with and i said like that's part of the thing like why these things are so tactile and, and fun to play with it is that like it feels like an old like like an old-timey computer like you sit down and you could just know like here's like here's a dozen different little sounds and here's the controls and these this yellow panel con you know connects to this and this blue panel connects to this and this and that and it's all just like just so perfectly laid out and pleasant and warm and fuzzy um yeah i don't know what's the what's the uh is it mondrian i'm talking to someone off camera yeah um what is it there's a, there's a person here you can't see uh the the color what's you're freezing up again did i block did i go away again you're in and out like a phantom ghost of tone mm. zoom i think you're back mm. should we untether zoom. and go to the my room? back we certainly could. I think you're fine. It's hard to know, you know. Just go for it. Let's We're see. dealing with Missouri internet, specifically Grandview internet. Hello. Yeah, you're here. I think people Am are I used here? to this in the pandemic. Can anyone world. hear me? Okay, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a great um, there's a great connection between like the USS ones have this kind of like bottom row and a top row and the bottom rows of the switches and the top row relate to those. And there's a little bit of crossover where this connects to this and this connects to this. Um, and there's like a lot of like thought went into something that ultimately looks really simple. Like yeah. you would describe the Maestro aesthetic as is, is awesome. I mean, this is pretty complicated looking, but this is not, the originals are not, they're all just sort of like that language of, you know, the original pedals are let each is defined by a shape and a color. The brass master is a red triangle. The octave box is a blue square. The, you know, the fuzz tone is a silver circle. And that is like, it's so simple. But even to this day, if I look and see a silver circle against black, I go, well, oh, fuzz tone. Like, it's perfect. It just, it just works. It's so simple and iconic and easy, like easy, easy, easy. And it, they feel like weird like 70s like minimalist art pieces to me it's just strange um the uh are we talking about the rhythm of sound or now the just yeah, the pedal I mean, we're talking about the ass i think the aesthetic is important you know anytime yeah this discussion of the new pedals it just everyone starts talking about the old aesthetic and i think you and i yeah i'm it's just such a part of maestro is aesthetic yeah. well, as much as it is sound yeah because there's, there's a there's a look the there's just like an overall makeable look to the, you can see a you can go to pedals from 100 yards and go like that's what i know um and like hmm let's say um i'm blanking a little bit uh there are yeah, we, we've talked about this a lot where like electro harmonics the um the best the best tightest design years is that they had sort of rules and all good product design is basically develop a set of rules to those rules and you can and make you know as long as you stay within yeah the yeah good design coherent. has to have rules cross yeah and there are a few very basic rules in uh maestro stuff which is to say a these super bright primary colors um am i freezing again you're fine we're just rolling with it you know okay if people right. have watched this far, uh, they don't care there's super bright colors the glowing switch which they did do kind of a nod to the um polished silver uh there's a silver stroke around everything um silver stroke is the name of our next uh, blue blues yes mm. i love it I think I should uh, stop the video. A color. Maybe we just go on. A shape. Let's do that. Yeah. Hey, we're just probably for the what? sake of we're gonna see if audio will just work. It's freezing up pretty bad. Let's try let's try to kill the video for a moment. All right. You there? I'm I'm here. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we can just Yeah, I think so demo the uh let's demo this rhythm sound. But you can't see me? It's fine. They can imagine. They saw it earlier. 
All right. So the rhythm and sound, um, there is a sensitivity and an input sensitivity knob on it in the in the corner. And you adjust that. So uh, when you have playing dynamics, like you strum harder and it triggers. And the bottom row of switches, um, you select what you trigger. So there's a handful of percussion sounds, two uh, like octaves, sub octave, kind yeah. of, uh, like a sub octave and a fuzz sound. And then there's these like color tones, which are a little kind of more universal across the whole thing. So um, this is, it's, it's very sensitive and weird. So I wish there was, we don't have video on this for sure. No, we do. We've got video. Yeah, we, we can see okay. it now. We killed our okay, so it's a gamble. I, I selected um, the bass drum and the tambourine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's literally what it does. <laughs> um, so you can kind of be like. And you're like, why does anyone need that? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is I don't know, That's but amazing. there was a, a great run of this era, a great run early, like late sixties, early seventies of like one man band things. Yeah. There's a lot of products like this that have wow. long since been forgotten, but like they're one man, like this was, this, you're meant to sit down with your, like, a, you know, your coffee shop gig and like, <laughs> it, it sounds insane, right? I yeah. want to be with you. <laughs> yeah. So now let's go to, we'll turn on the fuzz bass. So now when I, I play, have playing dynamics and hit that, it's going to give me a fuzz tone. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Is this the white stripe? <laughs> that is yeah, so ridiculous. Exactly. It's so insane, right? <laughs> So let's uh, what's what's this one? This is clav and oh, let's let's turn on clav and bongo. That's not seeming to work for some reason. What a shocker! <laughs> but that one works. We're sure of that. So uh, let's let's take the tone down to something a little more usable, so it's not so chaotic. <laughs> that didn't sound any better. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is Jack White in a pedal. <laughs> um, there is a kick drum uh, percussion unit, or uh, there's a kick drum input, so you can put a little like foot pad to like stomp, and it'll do the kick drum. Oh my gosh! Um, so here's a fun thing about this though. What so, did this cost? Do you know the price on this at all? I have no idea. Um, I can't find not prices. a clue. I, I have a, I have all of the dealer like you know in my weird obsession. I have like folders of the dealer materials and the original yeah. like pamphlets and displays and all that, but I don't think there are prices on any of them. Um, but here's a fun thing about it. So. Um, there's a switch in the center called cancel okay. and it is a big, big old physical switch here. So on the bottom, this yellow switch right here, you have to turn this on to get your clean signal to come through. See, you have to turn that on. So then you turn on your fuzz tone, you turn on your kick drum, your clav, and your <laughs> insane right so then you're like all right i'm done with that part of the song and i'm gonna hit cancel so you hit cancel and then all the switches turn whoa on, that's the whoa. original like it's like 50 years before chase bliss <laughs> that was yeah. crazy yeah but it's do just it funny again. because do it, like, again. do it again do it again Dan. do it again do it again Wait, can i switch over to the other light come yeah. on use I'll your the other yeah. yeah there so, you go yeah so i'm gonna <laughs> so cancel oh! Oh! but but it turns off your clean signal too yeah you gotta turn it back on that's so wild that's ridiculous all right i uh so what we're saying is yeah what, what are we saying then? just in summary because we've said a lot of things but what we're saying is is that what we really want from maestro <laughs> is this thing <laughs> Correct. We need my to shut it all <laughs> down and just make this pedal that 12 just, people will buy. Well, we just want this. We want to be able to put a tambourine <laughs> Here's through our the thing, I think 20 people would buy it if they invested. Oh, yeah. Because it's only going to cost them about 500 grand to pull it off. Right. And if I think they make 20 it, people will buy it. If they make it, I will dedicate an entire, we'll dedicate an entire JHS show episode. <clears throat> all right, yeah. yeah to it. Let's go to my camera. I'm going to say this. Maestro, Gibson, whoever you are. 
If you recreate the rhythm sound, <laughs> I will dedicate an entire Friday episode and a Wednesday live to no. promoting it for free. Hey. So it's going to cost you half a million to make I it. I am sure. I am sure there's someone who could make a good, like, um, you might need a special pickup or something, but someone where you can do, like, you know, a low, a low. I don't want a special pickup. I want what you just the kick. Someone can make a pedal that can do this kind of one man band thing where it would give you like a, you know, give you a snare on high, high yeah. hits and give you a bass tone beneath it, especially like yeah. in the era of the like the, you know, the the nine series pedals from Electro Harmonics. Yeah, yeah. like someone do, could do it. Is there, a, um, do y'all smell something in here? Oh, so. yeah. What is that? Is it a, is it Ernie Ball Trivia Time? Ernie Ball Trivia Time. I don't smell it. <laughs> Welcome to Ernie Ball Trivia Time. Uh, we ask a question. If you get it right in the comments, you're the first one. You get an entire box of strings from Ernie Ball. Whatever you want. Not a pack. A Not box. a pack. An entire box. I haven't messed it up yet this year. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. But hey, can, Addison, guess yes. what? Oh, wait. Guess what I did wait, hold last on. night. I was going to ask you. I the, put new strings on a guitar. Oh, my gosh. Hey, were they Ernie Balls? They were Ernie Balls. And they were also like was probably five years old. Okay. Not so. the segue, but Daniel, I've played that guitar. When's the last time you strung that guitar? What this? My yeah, Hackstrom? the Hackstrom. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's only have five. It only has five strings on it. <laughs> uh, it's it's been oh quite gosh. some time. All right. Um, well, Nick yeah. Nick changed his guitar strings, and you too can change your guitar strings if you get the question right. So if everyone's ready, we're just going to jump right into it. Here's the question: Who is the current CEO of Ernie Ball Music Man? Who is the current CEO so easy. of Ernie Ball Music Man? Is it though? I don't, know. You, I think don't it's know. Easy. you think? You it's think? Easy. Yep. Is so, it like a kind of a trick Vince question? Howard. Uh, it could be. I mean, if you listen to me. Hey Daniel. Michael B. Jordan. Have you ever seen yeah. this? Michael B. Jordan. I can't see anything you're doing. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, he can't see. He can't oh. see anything. Oh, that's right. Take it to Josh. We can't see me. We turned his feet off, right? Oh, that's oh. right. Yeah. Hold on. But I'm, I'm, I this do have a phone here. Enough. I do have a phone here with the ap- actual episode on because I'm watching it. So we yeah, wait yeah, yeah, two yeah. seconds. It might so show up. This Talk about it, Joshua, and I'll hold it up. <laughs> it well, is. A... Why don't. <laughs> wait, who's talking about it? Why don't I have that? <laughs> That's called the big muffaletta. <laughs> Look how many jacks are in it. Josh, I don't know what Josh, any of them Josh, are for. Josh, 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 so Josh. So what it is? To have a conversation. So what the big muffaletta is is have you ever have you ever wanted to play play a big muff, but you wanted to also play that big muff through um, like seven different amps at the same time. Well, now you can the because big the big muffaletta allows you to do that. Josh, so that's Josh, what that is. Josh. Josh, Josh, I need it. Give it to me, Josh. <laughs> this is Josh, for Daniel. <laughs> All right. Oh, so that's on like the, the way, one time you got that on me. I know I got it on you. On, oh yeah, one time. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> While we're gathering that, let's look down at the board. Let's hit the Ranger Overdrive. So again, in the vagueness of not knowing, it's some type of different clipping that's all they said i want to know i want to know does it make you upset it sounds well, like it it's makes like you upset. because again the tone control let's let's talk through this while yeah from the top down you have a you have a high low let's do max gain that's a great place to start on drives maximum potential is maximum understanding of an overdrive dang and it, that is a true statement. It sounds fancy, but if you can see how much distortion it offers, you can usually back through the different things that it could be. So, neck, uh, sorry, bridge. That's in the land of a 250. Like a DOD 250. It feels like uh, op amp circuit hitting some hard clipping diodes is my guess but i don't know because it wouldn't tell me the tone control it feels like a tone like a it feels like a low pass on the output much like you would mod a 250 or a distortion plus i don't know this is all spec this is called what does the high low switch do this is called speculating josh so high low 
maximum maximum gain is maximum understanding and that applies to clipping i think that's a diode toggle for the hard clipping so this would be more distortion and up is so up is louder, more crunchy. So the down is a lower forward voltage diode, like a 1N4148 or 1N916. Up is probably some weird combo, LEDs maybe. This is all guessing, I don't know. Don't believe anything I'm saying. I'm just, I'm feeling through it. It's like, it's like a cook eating someone else's fried chicken. You know what I'm talking about? We are like, I think, yeah. they, I think they put some paprika in there. I don't know. Yeah. All right, let's demo it. I'm going to... It just, But it still doesn't feel familiar. Again. It's not I'm a clon. I'm not a huge fan of this one. It's not a clon. I know that. So there's probably the most potential I see... And some kind of always on thing because it is it is holding up in that respect. <laughs> KFC forty. <laughs> What'd you say? Someone wrote KFC forty in the comments. All right, let's jam on it. Uh, <clears throat> max gain, high toggle, tone all the way up. Hold on, I want to try to not play Almond Brothers. Let me back that that's up. A, that's REM Monster Tone right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoever Duke is, they're crushing the comments today. I think, again, I don't know what that's like. You know, my my taster's choice moment of, like, what's in the fried chicken, the metaphorical look. I, I don't know. I mean, to it me. It sounds. Yeah, go ahead. It sounds better, brighter than, like, with a, to me, like, this is my least favorite of, the, of these. And okay. um, when you had it kind of cranked tone-wise and it kind of entered that, you know, like treble booster setting and we started mm -hmm. basically being like, oh, it sounds like Aria Monster. Like then I was like, oh, I could see the use for this. Right, but right. the rest of it felt a little muddy to me, a little like 
you know, same thing, a little bit uninspiring. But uh, you you did get a cool tone out of there in the end, so bonus to that. Bonus points. Mm. What do you got? In I, I, there? I do have to say, I mean, I this is sticking out to me. The design, the design man in me does is very unhappy that overdrive is hyphenated on it over dash drive why does it bother this store oh, dash shun Ooh, tell like, us tell us tell us what i just you know, i like you? i love hearing people talk about design because i i know what i feel but i'd like i like you're good so, at explaining the rules yeah so all right so let's let's go back to to rules land good design um, has rules right good design has rules all right so open this up we look at the brass master again right mm. so the uh the the name of the pedal is laid out clearly right on top next to the logo next to little horn things a lot of, a lot of room is left for it um i don't understand why distortion they didn't leave like they didn't leave room to actually write the whole word distortion or they didn't find a um a a rule for um this whole series where they could fit the names of all the pedals in a place where they didn't have to abbreviate it. Um, and it makes me, it just, it breaks my brain a little bit because it distortion should not be abbreviated. Does like it make that. your skin itch? It just, um, and that's the thing. You, you come up with a set of rules that works and then you kind of try things out. And, and yeah. there's a part of my brain that goes, all right, when you couldn't fit invader distortion where the name of the pedal goes, maybe you need to change things a little bit but you know they kept their rule in place which their rule allowed that um, mm. because they mm. all have the names in the same lower corner i'm just playing yeah those out but it doesn't fit discover delay is <laughs> different though discover that delay is yeah. circular yeah that is true that is interesting i i think if if we're gonna to wrap up the kind of um design conversation here like there's one and a half too many design ideas on these pedals. Okay. Like I think that's the 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 to me the glowing trumpets is all you needed. It's the glowing trumpets. The glowing trumpets, the glowing is trumpets are beautiful. The glowing trumpets are great. Good band. You didn't too. need a little. There's a little graphic under the name of each pedal. Like the discover delay has a last or not. The comet course has a little a little comet. Mm, okay. The original pedals, the original units, not a single one has an illustration on it. What these didn't need that. It doesn't. It doesn't add anything. Like, take some of that away. Get back. Get a little closer to the minimalist side of it. Um, yeah, just like a few. It's just a little busy, and these are like inherently not busy. I don't know. May I'm just being old man grump design about it, and I care too much about it, but. No, it's, it's, I love how much you love. I mean, again, you have this insane collection of this brand. You, this is like your second love. Eh, will never be surpassed. No, you're serious. It, it, Maestro, like you love Maestro was my first love. Electroharmonics is my oh, true love. Okay. Um, okay. Because I went down the Maestro rabbit hole first, first and early, that's right. like in, in the early two thousands, and that's where most of this came from. Um. Yeah, yeah I don't I know. Think you're I mean, I really hope the beauty of I hope it is. They, as guitarists, we have opinions, and I think yeah. it's great that you, yeah, you have such a crazy museum of sorts dedicated to their work. Yeah, it's cool to hear you compare. I think it's useful. It's useful for me. I like learning perspectives. Yeah, I mean, if um, as you had said earlier that a, a, a very nerdy thing that I do in my free time is I redesign pedals. Like, I have designed... I've taken a, a bunch of the modern electroharmonics pedals, like the, the, yes. one, the new ones that I really like, and designed 1970s style casings for them by using old Letraset fonts and like uh, abiding by 1973 rules and right. making cool delays. It'd be cool I, I if did, we did an episode about that next week. That would be cool if we did an episode about that. Um, I know I my favorite is like I I think the Electromonic Super Ego is one of the best pedals of the last decade. Um, it's incredible. I, the circuit, yeah. It's it's incredible, and I did a an inverse colorway like set, a version of you know big you know ram's head box uh super ego and i've done that for a handful of pedals of um and uh i can fully admit um that i, I have done a, a, i've seen them just a concept you designed of, what you would have done with this line i designed what i would look. have done with this yeah. line um 
and I'm not going to say think, it wasn't breathtaking. I don't think we're going to show it. I'll say it. It was breathtaking. I will say that um, it was rooted in the style enclosure. Was there included in yeah. the uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the post town style enclosure? It was very colorful. It has banana switches on it, and I took a stab at it, and I just did that for my own entertainment. Um, because I, yeah, as a designer, you want to give yourself exercises a lot. And the exercise I want to give myself was like, what would I do? Um, and I learned a lot of things from that process. And it's it's not as easy as one might think. It's not as simple as like, you just make it simple. You make it minimalist. No, like they're like, you have to kind of, there's a lot of. It's hard to do simple. less. It's hard to do less. It is. Um, even some of these things, they kind of break some of the rules. But I took a stab at it. I don't think we're going to show them. But um yeah, it was fun. Do we I do have that a, a lot. Do we have an Ernie Ball winner? Oh, do we? <laughs> um, what was the question? I picked this question. Who is the current CEO of Ernie Ball Music Man? Do you know this, Josh? Do you? Know, you sounded really confident. <laughs> he's over. He's busy playing Dave Matthews. Oh, sorry. The uh, answer actually is Sterling Ball. So all of you who said Brian, you were wrong. Um, but Shane Morgan. You were right. Go Shane. So uh, Shane, please email me, the JHS show at jhspedals.com. Send me your shipping someone, address. Uh, um, actually, one more thing. While you're doing that, I just wrote a song I want to play it. Hold on, ready? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Ernie Ball, you make strings and they're pretty good. <laughs> So, yeah. Oh, Shane, also tell me what kind of strings you want because you get a whole box. Um, Esther Gonzalez. Ooh, Mother Mary. I'm Ooh. sending you. Missouri Company. This. Props. Bow, bow, bow. This. Um, I have no reason to send it to you other than I saw your name. So, yeah. Mother Mary is a really cool company. Just Google Mother Mary gig bags. They have a killer fuzz pedal out, and their straps are quite posh. They're amazing. I'll use the phrase posh. So we have a winner there, and we have one more of the new pedals. So let's look down at that new pedal. It's the Discover Delay. I've actually used <laughs> on every jam because I'm weak without delay. Same. You know, it's like the delay it covers is sloppy playing. Yes, Haven't it you does. Read the and it, <laughs> it's like Batman has a belt of tools, uh, and it's called a utility is, belt. Shut up, Nick. This is my bat belt. You know, it's any a utility de- belt. Ba- <laughs> Batman has a utility belt. <laughs> That'd be a good pedal name, the utility belt. Yeah. It'd be boring, though. Anyway, all right, Bucket Brigade. So these two pedals are Bucket Brigade BBD tech, meaning 70s style time based effects. So, you know, chorus, trim, whatever's going on here, vibrato. And this is a Bucket Brigade delay. I've used it a ton. I'll set it at, let's play with it for a second. <clears throat> I've used mod on the whole time, but. So, uh, Bucket Brigade characteristic is the repeat gets worse and worse, which is why it's great. It's it's not an exact copy. Digital delay is a computeristic take on sampling something and releasing it back as it was played. If you want that, you get a Boss DD something. But this is Bucket Brigade, so, you know, in the style of how we've done the Panther Cub and stuff like that. It's trashy on the ends. That's the max delay time. So there, there's your slap. <laughs> so max time, that's probably one bucket brigade. You could stack them and get some more. That's gonna, that's around 340, 350 milliseconds, I think. It's about like a DM2. Now mix all the way up. Mix down. So you're blending, there is no full wet. So this is the fullest you would get. In other words, you can't play the delay and remove your clean guitar, which is useless for some people, very useless, useful for others. And then sustain, we wanna see Runaway on a Bucket Brigade. We wanna hear it explode. And we want to be able to turn the delay knob and have oscillation. This pedal definitely. 
definitely has a clicking problem now. Yeah, it does all that really well. That's fun. And then mod on is going to add an LFO, a low frequency oscillator to just the repeats. And that simulates tape warble. So let's do a single note here. This is a very nerdy show. I'm here for it. I'm just picturing like my aunt trying to watch this. She wouldn't do it. So uh, there you, that's very memory man. Uh, what do you think so about this, Daniel? Good. You played this. Um, I like this pedal because it's it's very clean. I guess is the way. I mean, like my 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 stupidly my favorite delay is like a sound tank delay. Like it's. It's a very like simple, clean, yeah. accessible delay. Especially clean in an interface, era, like... or are you saying user interface? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it, well, I mean, it's sound too. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's I don't know. It, it could, it's just very simple in a way that I I, I can appreciate because I like I tend to like simple delays. Like I have absolutely zero interest in like any delay pedal that's got like thirteen knobs on it and it does like yeah. shimmering dotted eighth twelfths with you know glistering. I don't glistering. You're, you're anti Addison. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I don't want that. <laughs> Wait, so I don't want I do. that either. I just want that modulation. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I I did find that uh, anything. This was like a very usable delay, but I did find that like when the sustain knob is more than like, I don't know, like two o'clock, I start getting clicking issues. Um, oh, okay, which I found a little a little frustrating. There it is. Yeah, we when we built our that? cub, we we had a name for this. We had to fix it. Bucket brigades are very hard to make. There's an argument for why I even make them anymore. Yeah. And the argument can be and, one on both sides. We and this we, is we had a we had huge issues with this on early cubs. You'll notice cubs have a V1. There's a V1.5, then there's a V2, and it was always dealing with that click. Yeah. So I know what's wrong with it. That's not helpful in this situation. Um, but. A strum, and then you get. I want. <laughs> let me take that back. This is a very usable. I shouldn't say there's something wrong with it. It always frustrated me, even with the Cubs. Like, I wanted to be like, just turn the knob. You know, you can use this delay. It's great. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a little bit of. Uh, maybe it's a. I don't know how to build a delay, but is it just like a tuning thing inside where like. Like, yeah, it just comes down the to the fact that the sustain kind of stops being useful after like two o'clock. Yeah, you're trying to take a you know the the challenge is a single bucket brigade chip offers you so many milliseconds, and then in design you have decisions to make. With a single chip, you stretch it or you do it to spec. If you do it to spec, mm -hmm. you get an allocated time measurement. So say <laughs> three hundred milliseconds or one fifty, whatever the chip is. And if you want more, you either stretch it out of spec, which is inherently like it's kind of like taking the brake out of your car. Like it's fun. You can have fun with that, but you're asking for trouble with the design. <laughs> you like that enough? <laughs> That's what you're doing. It's, you know, and so with guitar pedal, I mean, a fuzz pedal is out of spec and it's beautiful, but with delay and time-based stuff, yeah. then you have to filter. Then you have to fix the back end of that effect. You, yeah, it's design choices. And sometimes these, choices make really wonderful effects i think some of the greatest pedals ever made are broken pedals that's the point yeah i mean i i like me a good broken pedal yeah um i didn't i played like uh, of I, I like i said i spent a couple hours of these and um the the chorus is my favorite of the bunch the delay was second yeah um and i think just because it was like other than that kind of clock noise issue the clicking noise which kind of just Will kind of ramp in out yeah. of nowhere. Yeah. Um, it is a very, very usable, clean, crisp little delay, and it sounds cool. good. Let's um, do a jam on just the delay. But first, let's give away the last shirt. And I already uh, gave away the last shirt. Oh, great. Um, but what do you got? Um, You're our laughing. Over, our, I'm watching you laugh over there. <laughs> our original EB winner, our string winner, is no longer here. So oh, I want. I'm going to actually give these to Samuel Cable. So Samuel awesome. Cable, you win now. Uh, email me. I'm going to play the Invader Distortion, and 
I'm gonna, we're gonna do a delay jam. And then I have a weird special gift that I'm opening from Big Ear, and it's some release, and I don't know what it is, and nobody tell me. Apparently it was released a few moments ago. Hey, here's, here's a question. What? That was Daniel. Why? Oh, you got a question? Yeah, um, go, you just go for it. Maybe given the um, the the history of this company with tape echoes, why yeah. is this not more of a tape echo tape echo simulator? I don't know. I think that's what the mods may be trying to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. But you have to do digital to simulate tape, and then yeah, true. Okay, here's a jam. <laughs> Landed on the right chord. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. I I like. I mean I like it. I think it again feels. It it it, it like it's comfortably uncomfortably f not familiar, which is what poetry. All of these are. That's poetry. Let's see what this. I box feel like is here. yeah. This, go ahead. Um, if this had an expression input for the delay knob, you'd you'd like love it. I just use my hand like an adult. Yeah. Okay. That's like fair. I just. I'm joking. No, the expression thing would be amazing. Is there a box cutter? I have I have a screwdriver. So here's the deal. This is from Big Ear Pedals. I love Grant. He's been he's been a friend over the years. You know, he moved to Nashville. It says open live on two nine twenty two. That's all right. I feel like it. it's the scene from Back to the Future, where the Western Union guys like, are you Marty McFly? <laughs> all right, here we go. What's the deal with us opening crap lately on the show? I don't know. I set a precedent. Yeah, we're That's like true. in a zone here. It's like a thing. Maybe it'll be a thing I at the end of every I think it means that show. we're an actual YouTube channel now. Hey. Hey, if you like our channel, click like and subscribe. <laughs> Smash the like button. Smash the like button. Oh, it's two things. Uh-oh. Uh, top down is easier. Plus, I hate looking at myself. So, open me first. Open me second. Interesting. Uh, okay. All right, let's open this first. Nice white crinkle paper. Open me first. This better be Maestro related. 12322. What does that mean? What? Joshua, what, you, what you're about to see is top secret. Please keep this under wraps until Wednesday, February 9th, 1 p.m. Eastern. We're safe there. <laughs> thought you'd appreciate the souvenir in this box as well 
Grant and Karen, wonderful people. This is like a napkin, like a, it's, it's, I don't know. I am really hungry. Mm. Black ribbon. I, f I feel more and more like we're devolving into Ryan's toy review. This is a chef's hat. Whoa. Oh, Ryan, oh, Ryan made like $40 million last year, so let's, let's devolve. Let's keep devolving. <laughs> yeah, keep. Let's make some a pizza open. pie. <laughs> All right. A souvenir. Where is this going? Any predictions in the I, room? I have no idea. It's okay. a pedal. I'm really hungry. <laughs> okay. Open me. Chef's hat? Yeah. Addison, you want to? Anybody want to wear the chef's hat? Shouldn't you wear it while you open it? I feel like you. You're not. Josh doesn't wear hats. My my. His head is too big. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Sick bird. Open me second. Um. This is wrapped. I think I think the biggest reason I became friends with you is not because of pedals. It's because I spent my childhood getting made fun of for having a huge head, and then I met you, and you have a bigger head. So I. Sick dodging bullets. I want to point out you're wearing an original oh, that's a issue. Pizza box. <laughs> it's really a hungry. pizza. Oh my god. You're wearing an original issue incesticide shirt you bought <laughs> in the seventh grade. It's amazing. Okay, the original, the original pizza. Pizza fuzz, slice of pie, bigger petals, and the tone mob. So tone mob's been on the show. Thank you from your favorite pizza shop. Hot and delicious. Cereal number nine. That's Blake with a. That's funny. Pizza. Pizza I'm pie. I'm this so far. Man, there's this stuff everywhere. Hi, hey, you there? In front of this card. In the front of this card, didn't already get if the oh with Santa. <laughs> Okay, hi you, hey you, hey, hi. <laughs> Take it slow. Hey you there. If the front of this car didn't already get the point across, ellipsis, thank you, thank you so much for picking up the new slice of pie. We really appreciate your support and hope you enjoy the fuzz out of your new pedal. Bon appetit. Grant and Karen. <laughs> This is a very nice. It's like the is restaurant that a napkin. Ooh. Well, it's not just a napkin. I'm gonna. It's like have a restaurant say, napkin. It's not just unboxing. It's, is taking it's, too long. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, show Daniel. Too He's, long. <laughs> Daniel can't handle this. This is the. <laughs> this is the type of <laughs> restaurant napkin where it's, it's paper and disposable, but nice. You, my yeah, yeah. my gift to you was open quick. Really, Bull crap! You, really <laughs> you had like forty seven boxes. All right. Yeah, on purpose. I was messing with you. Oh my god. <gasps> Wait, That's oh, sick. Wow. Oh. It's a slice of It's pizza. a big ear petals and tone knob. It comes with crushed red pepper packet. Wow. All kinds of swag. Whoa. Tone Whoa. knob podcast. That's the most triangle triangle enclosure I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's pretty special. That is amazing. I'm really hungry. This is. What? I gotta what? keep all this together. What? Any? Any? That's anybody, incredible. You wanna, here, Addison. I definitely want to hold that. It's got a good weight and girth. Man, it's got a good click. If you know, if all pedals were shaped like that, you could probably fit twice as many pedals on your pedal board. Let's plug it up here. It. Let's plug it up. We have. Man, we have that's a good. Minutes. That's a good I'm pedal. I have to go home and be a father. But right now, I'm gonna play a pizza pedal. What, are, there knob, are, pizza are there knobs well, labeled uh, anything? What? Too many people. Too many people. What? Are the knobs labeled anything? No, and they shouldn't be. It's amazing. While we're on the uh, the the maestro subject, um, while you're plugging that in, yeah, I want to show a couple fun things. Please do. Ah, oh, yes. So uh, when you when you'd sign up to be a, a maestro dealer back in the day, there was a whole packet, and in that packet of dealer materials, there was um, demo flexi seven inches. That you could, uh, you could, that would, <laughs> you know, show off the pedals. They're clear blue and they're beautiful. And there was also uh, cassette tapes. You have a Maestro cassette tape. I have many Maestro cassette tapes. This one is a cassette tape that's just the theremin. Is it teaching you how to play the theremin? No, it's just like it's like you know, it's like you. It's like a you know, YouTube pedal demos before YouTube. It was oh. all just like, here's. Here's what the super fuzz sounds like. Here's what the rover sounds like. We didn't even get into the rover today. All right, here we go. 
uh, the pizza. My first instinct, again, you know, the uh, chef tasting the fried chicken analogy, a piece of pizza pie needs to be a Big Muff pie. Let's see. Oh. I don't know. Can Joshua, can you Google? Uh, yes. It'll be up now with copy. I don't know. It sounds great. It's definitely not like a fuzz face. Or so. It's probably, they'll probably say what it's based around. Because he already did tone mob fuzz faces. They don't keep they secrets might like be some here. people. Big ear, are you still here? If you are, tell us what this is. That sounds fantastic. Let's try to play metal because we don't know how. Ready? Yeah, just this. rip rip off um, the immigrant song. Whatever, that's how you play metal. Gear says you're right. I was right. You were right. <laughs> There's a certain. <laughs> you're sweating. I just want to point that out. <laughs> it's hot in here, and metal metal's inherently hot. You start heating up metal. Oh, I know. I used start to be in a metal st- band. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. Yeah. There's a certain thing that over 25 years of loving a pedal, you have a sixth sense. Okay. About things. Yeah. You see a pizza shaped pedal and you go, that's pie. Big muff pie. Big muff pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a gift. Big it's, muff pizza pie. It's not something that was given. It was something earned. Oh. So it's not a gift. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we're done here. I do want to give Final. a shout out to Richard Mintz and also Leslie West were also brilliant designers for the Maestro line. Wow. Final, uh, final thoughts? Uh, yeah, let's go around. Final thoughts. What we're talking just about our love of Maestro and Maestro and things that are Maestro. Addison, go first. I'll go with first. Your final thoughts. My final thoughts are: I'm impressed that they are as unique as they are. I'm just gonna I'm gonna stick with the point that I've been harping on the whole thing. Is that it's hard to do this in today's age in today's yep. society, yep. and you've done it. So good job, Maestro. That's my. That's my plug for Craig for these. just emailed me back. I had, uh, he's the designer of these. And so, first of all, Craig, wonderful work. These designs are really hard to do. So these circuits, like we're saying, fantastic job. He actually said the Ranger Overdrive is a soft clipper, which further confuses me on it's got to be some original take. I mean, it. I was totally wrong. So 
If I'm a cook, then I don't know how to make the fried chicken. Wow. Like that. That's Damn. a very difficult fried chicken to mm. taste and understand. Mm-hmm. I would have never mm. thought that's a soft clipper, so good job mm. tricking me. Nick, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think that I'm really just – I'm excited to see what they do next. Mm. I hope that they – I hope that they dip into their their catalog mm. of of classics. I think they have a lot to – a lot of colors to, to pull from. And a I, lot of I metaphors. To, yeah, yeah, a lot of metaphors. Um, yeah, I'd like to see some of this older weird stuff um, surface because I think people would dig it because a lot of it's really hard to find. Mm. Yeah. Joshua, who really has no skin in the game here. I really love the color on the Ranger Overdrive. Whatever, I don't actually know what that color's called, aqua? but it's one. No, it's not aqua. That's the it, color from the uh, sustainer of the original. Pedal it is Black. my favorite. What, I think right now it's my favorite what color. What color is that? Anybody? It's Katie Daniels. Like a for, uh, forest green. Okay. Mm, maybe. I don't think Something. it looks like a forest, but that's for another time. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel. Uh, so I'll say my take. In the, well, you already gave your take. No, did you give yeah, your take? I got something to say. Okay. You know? my, my take on this is I think like. Every, and they knew this. Everyone who this this brand is a difficult launch because so many people are freaking insane about the classic brand. And I think they made a calculated, very apparent, efforted stab at not doing what everyone expected. And I give them credit for that because that's like that's like jumping out of a plane with a parachute hoping it works. And so that's difficult. And they, and there's no way they did that on accident. Um, I look forward to uh, I hope I hopefully look forward to a line where they just straight up make a brassmaster and straight up make the octave box and stuff cuz there's it's so hard to find them. And yeah, I mean, you know, you read the comments, there's no phaser. It's like, yeah. We're obviously getting we're there's obviously some stuff coming we don't see. And I think I'm a consumer in this situation. They're fun, you know, we jammed on them, they sound great. And yeah, I think I think there's this bro, tiny broken hearted Josh who just wanted to see a brass master. But tiny broken hearted Josh will live to see something <laughs> later. Go ahead. Yeah. Daniel. Close that's, us that's out. Large largely in the ballpark where I am, where like it was for someone who could not possibly be more excited about the legacy of this company and this brand and those pedals, I, you know, I was rightfully a little like disappointed because, you know, I wanted to see some of those unobtainium pedals be accessible to people. Cause like, I'm lucky I get to play with this stuff all the time, but like most <clears throat> people don't. And right. I was really excited about like, all right, let's get let's get brass masters into people's hands. Let's get sample and olds. Let's get these, you know, the the very particular octave box sound into people's hands. And you kind of think like, yeah, everyone's gonna get the get to play with the stuff that I've I've loved so long, so long, uh, so much for so long. And it just kind of wasn't the experience. And um, I I really hope that these do well enough that. Uh, yeah, you know the overlords let the people you know because I, I i didn't talk with these people directly but it seems like they are they are excited about the original stuff in the same way that we are and i hope they're given the chance to let that stuff out in the world because i mean when you have oberheim design circuits and and, and robert moog circuits um you, you gotta let those out in the world man it's like yeah, Craig, you know, you Matt, out. Matt is a really great guy over, and he's he's a huge lover of the brand and highly involved in this launch. I think he's the project manager on it, and then you have Craig designing. Yeah. I'm just hoping to see. But it's hard, you know, from a company standpoint, like, I hate being told what to do. I get it. They wanted to do something different, and so I think, but as a collector and a super love of this brand, I think it's like, man, I want to buy a brass master. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah. This yeah. is good. Uh, this has been a two-hour maestro, just just nerdfest. giant hug. You know, like, it's been like a warm hug, right? Yeah. Okay. I think we're done here. Yes. Go uh, if in the comments below. I think it'd be helpful, maybe even for them. Like, tell them what you think. Like, give a, a yeah. Like, what do you think about these pedals? Um, also, hit like if you like this. If you didn't like it, hit the button three times, and that's a dislike. <laughs> Uh, comment, 
subscribe. D uh, Daniel's over at Tiny Media Empire. I highly encourage you follow. Follow? Oh my god. Unless you're in Alabama, and that's how you say it. The uh, follow him. Um, that's it. I guess we're done here. It's great seeing you, Daniel. I'm not done. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let you noodle on that and then just kill the stream. Go for it. You're gonna, you're taking it home, and it's gonna be a violent cutoff of your signal. You have ten seconds. <laughs> Not getting much. It's because we're killing his Zoom. That's with all. Laughter. All right, all right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>